Hey guys, I know it's not Sunday, and I would usually do this on Sunday, but the word is so boiling up in me that I need to do it today. This sermon is called, When Holiness Hurts. Um, I'm going to put it up on YouTube, so um, you, you guys can watch it, and I'll link it on Facebook as well. I've just decided not to use uh, YouTube Live anymore because I've been having some problems with it in my camera, judging from what happened on Sunday. Um, so, I'm not going to be doing Facebook Live anymore because it seems to cause havoc with the camera. What I'm going to do is just record the video straight and then put it up on YouTube and link it to Facebook. So that's how it's gonna, going to go from now on. Um, okay, let's pray. Father, I thank you and I thank you for this word that you're just bringing, brim, bring, brimming up in me. It's like a boiling pot that I couldn't even wait till Sunday. And you've, and you've assigned me to preach it now and I praise you and I worship you. Um, Lord, just do what you need to do with this world. Word, implant it in people's heart so that it will sprout seed and be watered and grown and Help nourish the soul of people. Speak to me, speak through me. Let your light and your glory abide with those who are watching this, who will watch this on Facebook or YouTube, God. Lord, I pray that you will just have your way, Holy Spirit, in this place. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys. Okay. This morning, I don't... First, let me start by saying this. I'm, contrary to popular belief, I'm not the most uh, spiritual person ever. Usually, when I get up in the morning... Um, I spend my time with the Lord at, n at night or in the early morning, but when I get up in the morning, the first thing I usually do is, um, basically, uh, huh, either read a no continue reading a novel, or answer emails, or something else. But this morning... The Lord said to me, <laughs> I want you to watch this sermon from the person you call your pastor from months ago. And I'm like, okay, I've already seen this sermon. Um, so I watched the sermon. And it hit me so differently than it did months ago. And, and this time it actually made me cry. And I'm like, what's going on? I've seen this sermon. But it hit me. And the, the preacher was talking about Acts 4. <laughs> uh when they gathered in the upper room and uh, he was talking about the people gathering again. This was just after the, at the tail end of COVID. Like, COVID is still going on, but at the tail end of the shutdown in the States, the sermon was preached. It was May last year. And he was talking about they will gather again, and he actually went into the audience and spoke 
to the seats and whatever and he said they're coming and whatever and um and then the lord spoke to me and said watch this watch a bit of this sermon he didn't tell me how much i was to watch but with like not the whole thing like I did with the person that I now call my pastor but he said watch a bit of this other person's sermon now this other person's sermon was called he was holy and he was talking about uh, celebrating here dealing with here and not just focusing on there and how we just want to get there but we need to realize that the Lord wants to work on us right where we are. Two great sermons, two great men of God, it was wonderful, the two sermons. But um, I don't know it's be if it's because I'm a female or I'm a I'm more emotional or whatever, but I began to think we hear all these sermons about uh, God's going to do this and gather the people and God wants to work on you here and God wants to do this. We hear all these sermons about God wants to do this and yes, he does want to do whatever because the Lord has given these um, pastors, either men or women of God, insight for their congregation. And yes, it's true. But I think what we've missed is that as preachers and as teachers and as leaders, we tend to forget that um, people are in a process and the problem with preaching to people is when you're preaching to people I'll tell I'll tell you a secret want to hear the secret when you're preaching to people you're not preaching to everybody who will watch usually God has a certain word for people that are watching and they'll receive it right away and they'll, they'll start working it right away and for some people they'll get it later and they'll start working on it later and some people they won't get it at all and it may not be because they're lazy or whatever or whatever we think or we're bad preachers or you know not saved enough for people to believe it, the word comes from god it may be because it's not their process yet and i think um leaders in, in the church need to understand that because everybody's process is different, they might not, they they may not get the word. And sometimes, sometimes even when they do get the word, there are there are things fighting them. And you know, sometimes um, I call this sermon when holiness hurts because. When you're talking about God wants to deal with you here or people gathering back together again or you're wondering why aren't the people coming back again or why isn't this happening, why isn't that happening, it's because these people as you're preaching, they're dealing with hurt and pain and struggle and I'm not talking about hurt and pain and struggle out there somewhere I'm not talking about hurt and pain and struggle 
with their church or no, I'm not talking about hurt and pain and struggle with their marriage or their Come from unknown name. Or hold on. Come from unknown name. Um, it's not that they are, like, resistant to the word, but it's just that they are going through a struggle and dealing with hurt and, hurt and pain, especially if they're dealing with a hurt and pain, uh, from their, from their church, or it's, Sometimes it, sometimes when you're listening to the word, the reason why you can't receive it is because you're dealing with hurt and pain in that area. And it's not because of you as a preacher or you as a minister. It's because of the process. And sometimes... We don't let people go through their process. We like to hear the story of healing right now. Or, like, we, we don't like to hear when people are going through the process. And sometimes, sometimes the process takes while, a while. And sometimes it's a process to get to the place where I am happy here, or it's a process to, to get comfortable with gathering with people and seeing pe people again, because we, we, we talk so openly at churches now about community and how important it is to get in relationship with the right people. I've said it too, and I'll continue saying it, but sometimes what we neglect to say is when you've been hurt, especially by the church, it is hard to, um, to build up that trust again to really um, be with people. And sometimes we don't give people the grace to say, our, we'll say, join now, we'll say, join this, we'll say, do that. But we don't understand that God is taking them through a process. What we should be saying as the church is, we're here. When you, when you need us, or when you feel that God is calling you this to this, this is an option for you, for you. And you can make the decision whether to join or not. And sometimes, unknowingly, um, we put, <laughs> we put pressure on people because we just like the we just like to see the numbers go up. We're focused so much on numbers as people, as a society, even as pastors or church leaders, we love to see big numbers. But what the Lord is focusing on now is souls. And sometimes holiness hurts and be when I say holiness I mean being set apart sometimes it hurts not to yell at the person in the grocery store or to say you're mad or upset sometimes sometimes it it hurts not to do that sometimes it hurts when you're 37 and single and and waiting for marriage and you're like oh yeah and you 
she's supposed to be it. Oh yeah, waiting for my husband. But internally, you're like, okay, you're, you're like, okay, God, should I say screw this and <laughs> and just go about my business and do whatever? Because sometimes it hurts to be holy. It mostly hurts to be holy. It hurts to trust again when you've been betrayed, when you've been ostracized. It hurts like hell. And sometimes we don't. We uh, sometimes we as leaders take for granted. We're like, do it, get in community, but not understanding that. It's, it hurts, yes, and getting in community, it's hard for people. And I'm not saying it's not, it's not beneficial or we shouldn't do it or we shouldn't stay by ourselves. I'm just saying we need to respect and accept people's process, even in churches. So, like... Like, the person may not be there yet. The person may be dealing with pain that they have to deal with on their own, or they can go to therapy, or they can do this. They have to, they have to grind and do things um, before they can get to that place where they can join an actual group uh, of people. And I know community is important. It is very important. It is essential. You're not alone or whatever. But sometimes God is taking somebody through a process of discovering themselves and who they are. And sometimes that process will require for a time you being alone. So what we should be saying is like, this option is available for you when you are ready to receive it. When you are ready, we're here for you. You don't have to have to do it right now. You don't have to do anything right now. But as an option, we're here for you. And I think, um, I think as um, preachers and leaders sometimes, we, we love to see the numbers, we love to see big numbers, but what God is focused on is not numbers, it's individuals. So the angels celebrate whether two people accept Christ or whether 5,000 people accept Christ. If, like, I've seen churches uh, say, oh, fi we fed 50,000 people this morning, or we did this, or we did that. And not that we shouldn't be celebrated or excited about that many people, but I think we should as well be excited if, we spent we fed 15 people today so because i think that it needs to get back to not so much the crowd but the one i think um the lord came for the one and i think that and everyone can affects so many people. When the woman at the well, uh, her story with Jesus and how Jesus uh, saved her and how Jesus gave her living water, that was one person. And that person went to her whole town and told what happened. So it wasn't a whole big group of people. Although Jesus did teach a, a whole group of people, but when he, 
where I think he really did the most ministry was um, sitting down with the one and diving deep. See, I think we're so focused on numbers that we're we're missing uh, people and where they are, and we're we're so fo focused on let's get this many people saved, reach this many people for Jesus that we're forgetting that even if it's one person you did your job as a leader and as a pastor and i think and even uh salvations too uh, we often give people the op opportunity to uh get saved that every service almost every church i've been to and we should this is essential we should give people the opportunity to accept christ saying that though some people when they hear the word they want to accept christ right away and we love that some people it takes thought it takes time it takes process because God is taking them through a process and we we need to allow more room for process and we talk a lot about process but really we don't allow room for process we like it now we like to see um, thousands of people raise their hands or flood the altar depending on what uh what your what your church does um but sometimes with people it takes time it takes a cave it takes you know it takes like it's a process sometimes salvation happens immediately and sometimes it doesn't so i would say to any church okay have that immediate response time where you uh where the people can come immediately or raise their hands or uh do it online or but also have a texting number or something where people if they're if they're going through process and and God is taking them through a process, when he opens the door, they can still open the door and accept the Lord. Um, because it might be a process for that person. It may not be immediate. Like, some, some people may be like, I agree with what that person's saying, but I'm not... I'm not ready yet to accept Christ. I'm almost there, but not really. And that's okay. That's okay. And sometimes it it hurts. Sometimes we don't, we say things and we want things for people. But the problem is we don't know where people are. Maybe they've been so beaten up by five churches or six churches or they were really uh verbally attacked in a cell group or whatever or they felt like left out like um these people already knew each other so they felt left out so every time they come came back it was just very hard for them to get into it because they're, they're not the kind of person and but what I'm saying is, give people time for process. That's all I'm saying. And so, and the reason why I call this holiness hurts is because it does. And sometimes you're saying, uh, when when the pastor's saying, you need to celebrate now, you need to whatever, and you say. What if here is just abusive and I'm just, 
and like it's just terrible. It'll take maybe for you. It'll take a process of you celebrating here, or it'll take a process for you to come come back to church again because um, nobody in a football game hurt you, but. The people at the last church you went to hurt you. And you're like, you don't stop eating if you, like some people say, if you don't stop eating because of bad food. No, but I can stop eating at that restaurant. I don't want to go back to that restaurant if they gave me bad food. Um, so I think you just, I think the Lord is saying, whatever process you're in, wherever you are in your life, it's okay. Don't put pressure on yourself to be a certain place, or to be a certain way, or to do this a certain way. And understand when preachers are preaching, they, they are usually not preaching to everybody in the same same room at the same time. Everybody's hearing it, but everybody's process is different um, to receiving the word or whatever. Some people won't receive it at all at that moment. Some people, it's for them and they take it right away and run with it and things just happen for them. And some people, it's a slow burn. You know, some people don't receive a sermon for three years. And you know what? That's okay. And if people are being stubborn and just not open to God, that's not okay. But that's their business with God. That's their, that's their issue with God. And he will wrestle with them and work that out. And do what he needs to do in their lives. We just need to respect that there is a process. And it and it hurts to be holy. It hurts to be separate. It's, it's not an easy thing to do. It's a very challenging thing to do. And it is a holiness is a daily dying to yourself. And it hurts when you're a teenager and you can't go to parties or you don't have any friends because you stand for holiness and the rest of the people are drinking and having sex and your parents are like, just be holy, but, or just do this. And you're like, I would, like, it's so easy for you to, <laughs> to say that because you're not 17 and like, like a horny toad, so it's easy for you to say, wait until marriage, and, and whatever. It's easy for you to say that, but it's a process, and I'm here to tell you, whatever process you're at, God understands the process, and he will walk you through it. Even if you're being stubborn, even if um, you're... Um, you're just uh, being hard to deal with. He will wrestle you. He will do whatever he needs to do. He loves you too much to keep you stuck. He wants you to have freedom. I, I was watching something the other day. It was a conversation. And they, and somebody on, online, they, they talked about, in the conversation, they were talking about the idea of a blacksmith, and there are people that come along with you uh, to uh, be your blacksmith. And that is still true, by the way. But there is someone online who said, God is my blacksmith. And the person said, let me correct you. You, you need... You need people to be your blacksmith. And that is totally true. 
God will send people at different seasons. I talk about that more in my um, uh, sermon I did previously. But what dawned on me now is that maybe that person went, who said that online went through hurt. And sometimes when you go through hurt, it's easier to depend on God because you know He will never leave you nor forsake you. And everyone depends on God, but sometimes when we lock ourselves away, it's because we've been hurt. The reason why we say we don't like people or we don't like church is because we've been hurt and the pain is horrible and you just don't want to go through that again. And what the Lord is saying, one step at a time, one step at a time, one step at a time. So you could join a group or maybe not even join a group, but get a buddy, get, get one person, um, ask for one person to walk beside you. And then, and then you two meet up once a week and say, can we share the word of God in the sermon? Maybe it's not a group to start with. Maybe it's just one person. God is saying, I know you've been hurt. I know there's been pain. I know, but I'll walk you through the process. And he said, I am. I am going to walk you through the process and light your way. And it's okay wherever you are. If you hate people right now or if you just are so fed up and pissed off with church, that's okay. Just let him walk you through the process. And he understands the pain, but he loves you too much beloved to keep you in the pain and he will he will light your way every step there is a video i think it's a Bil billy jean video where michael jack well where michael jackson is um walking this road and every every place he steps every place that that he's supposed to step, it lights up and he just walks on the place that are lit up. And he says, and the Lord says, take it one step at a time. Maybe it's not a whole group to start. Maybe it's just a friend. Maybe it's just one or two people that you get together with that you, you know, have fellowship with. And you could even be honest with them. You could say, God, guys, I was so hurt before in the previous group, and I'm scared. I'm really scared. I'm like a bunny rabbit ready to flee. But just help me and, uh, help me and, uh, be with me and we'll get through this together and that's okay that you're scared that's okay that you don't know that's okay that you're not there because eventually you'll get to where god wants you to be and your story will be a testimony and your story is already a testimony right where you are, not only it, will it be a testimony, it is a testimony right where you are. So whatever you're, whatever you're facing, just be honest with the people around you and say, look, I am just not in the people, but I'm trying this thing because I know I need community but I'm scared or 
this holiness thing, this not getting angry thing, man, is so hard. I just, I'm just struggling here. And it's, to struggle is okay. To admit that you're going through a process is okay. To admit that you're angry is okay. God just wants one step at a time. And understand that, like I said, when people are preaching, they're not preaching to everybody. Or sometimes some people get it right. So some people need it right away. Some people need it later. Some people uh, don't need it at all until years down the road. And that's okay. And sometimes I think um, it's a church ego thing as well that we just like to advertise we've fed this many people, we've done this many things. But really, humans care about that stuff. God doesn't care about that stuff. He cares whether we feed if we feed, feed 10 people, if we are there for two people. He cares about the soul. We care about the crowd. And sometimes caring about the crowd, we tend to overlook the soul. And um, we, we tend to look, overlook the one in favor of the crowd and Sometimes that's what messes us up. We need to look at the soul. We need to look at each person as an individual. Um, so just because there's a crowd in a church doesn't mean that that church is thriving. Um, and just because they're a small church doesn't mean that that church is dying. It's it's all about what's in the church. It It's not about the people. It's about the Spirit of God and how He works in the church. We look at a lot of people and go, wow. And we look at the little people go, what? well, no. Um, but but we need to start looking at the spirit be behind certain things before we say that is good or bad. And we need to understand that pe that all kinds of different people are going through a process. I heard someone preach one time, and they said, and they had, it was a hard word, and they and they said come up to the altar if you're feeling this way or whatever and then and then they said I got so many e emails I think people didn't come up and I don't understand why I said well I kind of do because some people in their process are not there they they are like little scared rabbits and they're they're afraid to come out for several different reasons it could be because they're afraid that people are watching and they have god hasn't delivered them from the opinions of people yet um it could be so many reasons and i'm just saying maybe people's Maybe that was people's process, you know. Maybe they felt a little ashamed or scared or whatever. But whatever feelings they were having, it's up to God and them to deal with it. It's not for us to judge or say that, why didn't you come up if you were feeling this way? Why email me and flood my inbox? Well, I was like, maybe they felt comfortable. Uh, they didn't feel comfortable coming out in the public. Maybe they felt comfortable writing 
a few a few weeks ago I talked about different um, avenues of communication and that is one of the things sometimes people are not public people sometimes they like to communicate in writing and other ways because it's easier for them to um, get stuff out and I was watching someone the other day who said um, they actually um, something happened with their husband and they actually texted him because for them it was probably easier to text him in writing and then they talked about it after and you could say why did you text your husband why not communicate with him because why not talk to him because maybe she doesn't feel comfortable in talking and for me she doesn't feel comfortable in talking out things because sometimes you could be a talkative person but when it comes to hard things it's very difficult to look someone in the eye and have those hard discussions so it's okay it, wherever you are it's okay god will get to you to where you need to be so don't feel pressure don't put pressure on yourself to be at a certain place just trust that he knows what he's doing with your life Thank you, Lord, for your word, and thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do, and thank you, Lord, for what you've already done. We worship you, and we give you praise. You're God, and there's none else. We love on you because you first loved us. Saturate us in your love today, and, and, and help us know that you don't want us to be at a certain place. You just want us to go at your pace. And God, help us to know that you will do whatever it takes to get us there. And help us know that the journey will begin with the one step. And each step, like that Michael Jackson video, you will light the way. If we need to take one step, you will write light the way. If we need to go full steam, you will get us to the place where we can go full steam. And Lord, thank you for making us all different and for accepting our different processes in different places where we are. In the name of Jesus, amen.